Our next topic in modern physics is going to be the Bohr atom. And now the Bohr atom is of course not a real atom, it's a model of the atom. And of course the simplest atom in the universe is the hydrogen atom which consists of a single proton and a single electron. And the assumption at, at, in the beginning was that the electron was circling the proton in a kind of a circular orbit just like a planet orbits the sun. And assuming that that orbit had a radius r, they tried to figure out what the radius of that orbit was, what the energy of the electron was in that orbit, and we also had an understanding that the orbit, that the energy, that, I mean that the electron could actually jump to higher orbits so that there were various energy levels that the electron could be at and that we assumed that it would always stay at the innermost energy level unless it was compelled to be at a different level through an input of some energy, but we'll get to that at a later stage. So assuming that the, energy, that, the elect, that the electron is in the innermost orbit at its lowest energy level, how do we calculate the energy level or the energy of that electron? Well, the assumption is that the total energy of the electron would be the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. So let's first try to figure out how we can find the potential energy of that. Well, um, the potential energy would be caused by the electron being in the electric field of the proton, which means that at this location right there, there would be a potential. And the potential in volts is equal to K times the charge that causes the potential divided by the distance away from that charge. So in this case, it would be a distance R away from the proton, and so therefore the charge would be the charge of the proton, and K, of course, is 9 times 10 to the, the 9. That's the uh, Coulomb constant. All right. Now, to find the potential energy, you would then multiply the potential at that location times the charge placed at that location in that potential, and of course that would be the electron. And if you bring those two together, that would therefore be equal to K times Q of the proton times Q of the electron divided by R. And of course the charge on a proton and charge on an electron is the same, so let's call it E for electron charge, knowing that the the charge of the proton is positive, the charge of the electron is negative, we can say that this is equal to K times E times the negative E over R, or this is equal to minus K E squared over R. So that determines then the potential energy for the electron, so E total can then be said is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy which now can, set, can be said to be minus K E squared over R. Okay, what about the kinetic energy? Well, for a small particle, not moving at relativistic speeds, and it turns out that an electron in the orbit around the nucleus of a hydrogen atom does not travel at relativistic speeds, so we can say that the kinetic energy is equal to one-half mv squared. Plus, of course, and actually we can make this now a minus, so minus uh, k e squared, k e squared over r. All right. Now, we want to express the kinetic energy kind of in the same terminology as we do the potential energy. For that, we need to, again, assume that the electron is in an orbit and it's going to feel a force of attraction due to the Coulomb force in the direction of the proton. And, of course, it's that Coulomb force must equal to the centripetal force. Now, the first C is for Coulomb, the second C is for centripetal force. So it's a centripetal force that causes the electron to travel in an orbit. Otherwise, of course, the electron to follow Newton's first law and just keep going in a straight line. So knowing that, we can say that the force of attraction between the two charged particles must equal to the centripetal force. And so we can say that K, Q, little q divided by the distance between the squared must equal mv squared over r. All right, now what I can do here is I see the mv squared here, I see an mv squared there, I can go ahead and solve this equation for mv squared and then substitute what I have in here. Now again, remember that q and q are the electric charge, and in this case we're going to use that as a positive quantity because the absolute value of that, that force. So we have k times e squared divided by r. Now notice that this r cancels out that r, so I only have one r, and that equals mv squared, which means I can substitute this in for mv squared over here. So the total energy of the electron in orbit around the, around the proton is equal to ke squared over r, 
And of course, the reason why I made this positive, not negative, is because the kinetic energy only can be positive, can never be negative. And so minus uh, k, oh, I don't, don't forget the one half there, so over 2 times k e squared over r. All right, now notice that this minus this, this is twice as big as that, so this then becomes e total is equal to minus k e squared over 2r. And that will now be defined as the energy of an electron in an orbit around a, a hydrogen atom here. Now, the problem is I cannot yet evaluate it. Why not? Well, I know what k is. k is 9 times 10 to the 9th. e is simply the charge of a single electron, but I don't know yet what the radius is of the orbit. So to find that, you need to come then to our next video. So at this point, we now already know what, how to calculate the energy of an electron in an orbit. So we'll put that equation down right here. So the energy of an orbit, of an electron orbit, is equal to minus k e squared divided by 2 times the radius. And now, on the next video, we're going to see how we can actually find the radius of that orbit, and then we can calculate the actual energy, and we can figure out what the radius is to understand the Bohr atom. So, that's the first part. Come back for part two.